Hi and welcome my dear friends of the underwater world. It's time for another tutorial. Uh, this time on a topic that really affects every diver on every dive. Decompression. In this context we will also look um, at how a dive computer works and whether they are really as conservative as we always believe. Let me know in the comments whether you already knew all this or not. Yeah. Every diver knows that when we dive, we absorb nitrogen over time and when we are on the surface, we release it again. But why exactly does this happen and how can we visualize it? Let's take a look at the whole thing using nitrogen. Assuming a pressure of one bar at the surface, the pressure in our body is balanced between our tissues and the blood circulation. When we submerge, the pressure on us increases. We breathe in our uh, breathing gas at ambient pressure, which is why the pressure in the bloodstream increases. And the balance is now disturbed and there is uh, increased pressure in the bloodstream an equalization is sought whereby the nitrogen is transferred to the tissues until equilibrium is restored. If we now re-emerge, exactly the same thing happens in reverse order. The pressure in the bloodstream drops and the nitrogen moves out of the tissues and is exhaled until the original balance is restored. In order to delve deeper into subject, we need to understand the concept of half saturation time. The half saturation time means that the pressure within a tissue increases by half of the prevailing pressure difference after the corresponding time. With the half saturation time of one hour, we would therefore have 50% after one hour, then 75%, then 87.5%, 93.75%, 98.44%, and after a fixed hour, for example, a fixed half duration time, 99.22%. After six half saturation times, it is assumed that the respective tissue is completely filled, 100%. So, let's take a look at two different tissues. One tissue with a half saturation time of 60 minutes and one with a half saturation time of 30 minutes. When we are at any depth, the pressure to be aimed for correspondent to the pressure at the respective depths. The 60 minute tissue fills up by 50% within one hour. The half saturation time. The 30 minute tissue passes through two half saturation times in 60 minutes. It fills up by 50% after the first 30 minutes as we saw on the previous slide by a further 25% after the second 30 minutes and a thus reached 75% in its saturation after 60 minutes. Let's take a quick look at where this irregular saturation behavior comes from. The term gradient is often used for this and this can be described as the word difference. At the beginning a tissue is not yet saturated and therefore has a difference of 100% to the desired pressure at any given depth. Over time, this difference, the gradient, decreases. After the first uh, half saturation time, the gradient is only 50%, which means that as the gradient decreases, the speed at which the pressure is equalized also decreases. You know this when you open your scuba tank and let the air escape. At the beginning it blows off strongly and the pressure drops quickly. But this decreases over time and this is exactly what happens when the pressure between the tissue and the blood circulation equalizes. 
and this is also known as nonlinear behavior. We now have different tissues in our body, all of which have different properties and therefore different saturation behavior. In order to be able to map these, but since a list of each individual tissue would no longer be manageable, they are grouped together in so-called compartments. A compartment therefore comprises several tissues with the same saturation behavior, same half saturation time. For the rest of this tutorial, we will limit ourselves to the six compartments shown here, although modern dive computers are happy to work with more than these six. Each compartment also has an M value. This M value describes the maximum content that it can absorb and with which you can ascend to the surface without an emergency decompression stop while maintaining the maximum ascent rate, whereby the risk of contracting decompression sickness, DCS, is negligible. Um, it is true that compartments with low half saturation times have high M values and vice versa. If we now go on a dive that is shallow enough so that the prevailing pressure is below all the M values under consideration, we could theoretically stay here indefinitely and ascend directly at any time without suffering from DCS. Let's take a look at a specific dive at a depth of 70 meter. We can see from the graph that the pressure at a depth of 70 meter is below the M values of the 5 and 10 minute compartments. We can therefore ignore both tissues in the following analysis. Let us also assume that we remain at this depth for 40 minutes. Then the compartments fill up as follows. The 20 minute compartment goes through exactly two half the duration times and thus reaches 75% of the target pressure, which prevails at the 17 meters. The 40 minute compartment runs through a half saturation time and so that 50% of the ambient pressure is present in this tissues. The 80 and 120 minute compartments do not undergo a complete half saturation time. However, due to the previously mentioned behavior during tissue uh, saturation, it cannot be said that these have a quarter or a third of the desired target pressure. The reality is always higher. Please know that these representations are only of a qualitative nature. Let's take a look at a second dive. This time shallower at 9 meter, but also 40 minutes long for a better comparison. We can see that the 20 and 40 minute compartment no longer need to be taken into account, as the M values are above the ambient pressure. The behavior of the 80 and 120 minute compartments remain unchanged. It should also be noted here that the representation is of a poorly qualitative nature again. On this context, we often speak of a so-called control tissue or control tissues. In a decompression dive, which you should only complete with the appropriate training, the control tissue is the one that first specifies a decompression. For no decompression dives, a distinction must be made between shallow and deep dives, with the control tissue being the one that that's the no decompression time or the no stop time. We could see that the shallower dives, the fast compartments, those with low half saturation time and high M values, were increasingly removed from consideration, whereas the slower compartments determine the dive. For deeper dives, the faster compartments were also included in the analysis and the no decompression time available to us was determined by their fast saturation behavior. 
Now we have looked at saturation underwater. Let's take a brief look at desaturation. Here nitrogen is broken down accordingly to the scheme described in the beginning, whereby two variants are distinguished. In theory, compartments behave identically to saturation during desaturation. This means that they break down the nitrogen according to their half saturation time. Most dive computers also follow this assumption. In practice, these compartments are rather tissues, cannot be considered separately from each other, but must be considered as a whole body. According to this, there is a gas exchange between the individual tissues during desaturation, which is why fast tissues absorb nitrogen from the surrounding slower tissues and thus break down the nitrogen more slowly than their half saturation time. This assumption is followed by the usual immersion tables. For this purpose, the fast components during desaturation are shown as 60 minute compartments. Slower compartments retain their half saturation times. Finally, let's take another look at these two cases and the resulting image. After our 40 minute dive to a depth at 70 meters, we can assume the following nitrogen content in the relevant compartments. Let's look at the theoretical process first. If we spend an hour at the surface, the 20 minute compartments go through exactly three half saturation times and is almost empty. The 40 minute compartment first undergoes a half saturation time, during which the nitrogen content is halved and then another half saturation time. The 80 and 120 minute compartments are also partially emptied. However, neither of them by half. The same nonlinear behavior analogous to saturation must be also taken into account here. Here is a comparison with the real process. The 20 and 40 minute compartments uh, desaturation with a half saturation time of 60 minutes. The 80 and 120 minute compartments empty as shown above. Both fast components therefore only go through exactly half a saturation time, only desaturate by half in each case and therefore have significantly more nitrogen enriched than in the theoretically observation. The comparison of the two models can be seen here. The slower compartments are identically in both assumptions. The faster ones show significant differences. But what does this mean? Theoretically, the faster compartments have less residual nitrogen. And we have seen that these determine the deep dives. In theory, our dive computers therefore gives us more no-stop time for deep dives and less for shallower dives. A contradiction in terms. In practice, the faster compartments have a higher residual nitrogen content. As these determine the deeper dives, we therefore have also less no-stop times for deeper dives, whereas the no decompression time or no-stop time for shallower dives remain the same. That sounds more realistic. Don't you think so? So, we learn from this that some dive computers and the algorithms they use are not as conservative as we often think. Yeah, so that's it. You've made it. And I hope you really enjoyed this video. I've really put a lot of effort into making the whole topic as clear as possible and would be really pleased if you would like this video, follow the channel if you haven't already done so, or recommend the video to other divers. Was there anything else missing from the video? Was something incomprehensible or was the part too lengthy? No matter what, please put it in the comments, then I'll know what I can do better in the next time. But until then, I'll just say all time good air and ciao.